Two years ago, I created a video that struck a chord in the miniature painting community. It sparked ire and outrage, it started conversations, but the goal was to inspire change. So, was it successful? I'm talking about my We Need Better Miniatures video, which focused on the sexualization of the female form in the hobby and my plea for more options of miniatures. When I released that video, we were at the cusp of a miniature painting revolution, though I did not realize it at the time. Today, we are taking a look at the hobby and the community at large to see how far we've come. But before we get started, look at this amazing miniature! Persephone Death Reborn, or my working title Persephone Breaker of Gates, as well as her horde of undead are on Kickstarter right now. So pause the video, go pledge on Kickstarter. I'll talk more about her later. Okay, a brief overview of what we talked about last time. Historically, miniature painting, Dungeons and Dragons, and the nerd sphere at large has been a place created by men for men. This domination by a single group greatly impacted the type of media that was created and how the characters in that media were portrayed. That isn't to say that products that came out of this era were inherently bad, just that they are all a product of their era. And the sexualization of women was a prevalent pattern. So when I started this hobby five years ago, wanting to paint badass women miniatures, the ratio of sexy models to non-sexy models was disappointing. It seemed the default was scantily clad, exaggerated proportions, and poses that made it very clear that the model was a beautiful woman. Sure, you could find women with swords, maybe they had armor, but their sexuality was an inescapable part of the model. What you are left with is a community that could seem unwelcoming to women and others who just don't want to paint sexy models. And like I did last time, let's quickly address a few counterpoints. It's okay to paint sexualized women miniatures. The problem isn't that sexy models exist, the problem is that they have historically been the default. They are pieces of resin and plastic, they don't have sexuality. Well, these types of models market to your sexuality and what these companies thought the community would want. And when that becomes a dominant trend in the hobby, it gives an impression on the community overall. Tapless men and scantily clad women are not the same thing. Tapless men are usually depicted as strong and independent, where women have historically been posed in ways that highlight her sexual availability. The human form itself is not sexual, it's the pose, the expression, and context that makes a model sexualized or not. Like I said, I go far more in depth in this video here. So with our context in mind, let's get to the point of this video. Have things changed? The answer is a resounding yes, though not in ways that I expected. Before we continue, due to her size as well as the time frame for this video, I had to crank out this model. And in doing that, I wanted to be comfortable. So my wardrobe staples have been t-shirts from Into the AM. Into the AM shirts are comfortable, high quality, and come in a variety of styles, from t-shirts with really cool graphics to basic tees. Into the AM offers bundles with three graphic tees for $60 or three basic tees for $45. My viewers get a further 10% off when they use the link in my description box. The biggest proponent of change? The 3D printer. Historically, the creation of a new miniature was expensive, laborious, and time-consuming, requiring a whole team of people to go from concept art to getting a model in a customer's hands. But 3D printing changed all of that. More efficient, more cost-effective, and easier than ever before, 3D printing grants the accessibilities to create miniatures previously reserved for companies. Combine that with websites like Patreon, My Mini Factory, and Kickstarter, we have found ourselves in an environment where, in theory, any desire for any kind of model could be met. You could even hire your own sculptor and create your own custom miniature. The sky is the limit. 
Today, far more women look like they have weapons and they know how to use them and take care of themselves. They're in plate mail that doesn't have a keyhole cutout to show their cleavage. They look like they own their sexuality and their body, and not like those aspects are something to be consumed. Really, it's how the clothes, the pose, the expression, the context of the model that helps decide if a model has been sexualized or not. But can we tie any of this to my video? Actually, yes. For the past several months, Witch Song and I have been working to bring my idea of Persephone, Breaker of Gates, to life. The model is nearly 8 inches tall and has a tower shield of a gate from the underworld, which is just really metal. Not only is Persephone the goddess of spring, but she is also a goddess of doors and gateways. So when I wanted to create a model that was something more than just a badass woman in plate mail, Persephone seemed like the perfect subject. All of the models come pre-supported and have been test printed so you can throw them on your printer and print with ease. The base Kickstarter is the model of Persephone, a bust of Persephone, and an undead elk and bear. However, we have the most amazing stretch goals that I would love to see come to life. Also, Persephone and her horde all come with pre-designed 5E stat sheets. If you like me, if you like big models, if you like badass women in plate mail, and want to show the community that this is a type of model and the type of content that we want in this hobby, that you should go and back it on Kickstarter. Last year, I helped design The Frontier of D&D is a Woman, which has since turned into a very successful My Mini Factory tribe. There are hundreds of women miniatures of a variety of races, body types, poses, and more, all inspired by races and classes of Dungeons & Dragons. That frontier raised over $70,000, which just goes to show that there is a market for this type of miniature. But beyond just what I have created, here are a few companies who are also making models that I love. Glute Studios, Vevictus, Mammoth Factory, Daybreak Miniatures, and Flesh of Gods. This is not to say that there are not other companies making great and amazing models, just that these companies had an above average quantity of fully clad models versus scantily clad models. If there are more I should check out, please list them in the comments. Though slower, there has also been a shift within the physical miniature producers as well. I've seen some great sculpts from companies like Big Child Creative and Hera Models, and I've even seen some progress in Games Workshop. Recently, GW released Severina Rain, a commissar who is wearing the exact same thing as her male counterparts. And an honorable mention to the older women and more diverse paint jobs done in some of the new Sister of Battles releases. In some areas, we have had amazing progress, and in others, the large machine of capitalism is slow to turn. Next, what I would love to see is miniatures sculpted in a variety of races with a variety of bodies, as well as non-binary or gender fluid characters as well. Sure, you can just paint the skin tone on a model to be whatever you want, but we are at a point in time where you can sculpt in the heritage in the face of these models. However, body size and gender fluidity are a lot more difficult to add after a model has been sculpted. And it would just be cool to see models that don't need to be customized at all. I will be tackling some of these issues when I release my own miniature line at some point in the future. So what happens next? I'm going to give you the same advice that I gave last time. When you see miniatures that embody what you want to see in the hobby, buy them. Share them on Instagram, message those creators letting them know how much you appreciate the model that they have created. Support creators who are leading the charge in what you want to see in this hobby. Lastly, let's touch on the change in the community. Really, I just want to say how excited and how happy I am to see all of these new, non-traditional people join this hobby. If you are interested in finding new, 
non-traditional content creators in this hobby, I will have a bunch listed in my description box. The best way that you can support me is to go join me over on Patreon. However, the second best thing is to go look at the comments down below and see how the conversation is going. When I released my We Need Better Miniatures video, it got ugly. And if you think that the comments that I showed in the beginning of this video were the worst, those were just the ones that got through YouTube's automatic filter. So like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.